Chicago, the Biden White House, of course, has seen its fair share of ups and downs in the first few years of the administration, from the chaotic Afghanistan withdrawal and the start of the war in Ukraine to the economy coming off the COVID pandemic to concerns about the president's age. The Biden administration has sought to paint a positive picture, but now a new book by Franklin Foer, obtained by News Nation, goes inside the White House. Correspondent Kelly Meyer joins us live. So, Kelly, it's called The Last Politician, and it really gives us a closer look at some of the major events so far. It does, Nicole. It really goes from crisis to crisis, talking about the withdrawal from Afghanistan, as you mentioned. It also talks about Biden's support of Ukraine and its war against Russia, detailing that as a strength of him as a wartime leader. But it also goes into some of the weaknesses of the withdrawal from Afghanistan they refer to, as well as the criticism around his age. There is another moment that's been talked about in there, and it's when he gave this speech in Warsaw, uh, and he said Russian leader Vladimir Putin cannot remain in power, uh, in effect, leading some to believe that he was calling for a regime change. Uh, it details the moments after that ad lib, where instead of focusing on his historic speech, the headlines were about White House staff walking back Biden's off-the-cuff comments. An excerpt obtained by News Nation reading, quote, rather than owning his, his failure, he fumed to his friends about how he was treated like a toddler. Was John Kennedy ever babied like that? The book shows President Biden also standing by his decision to withdraw U.S. troops from Afghanistan in the summer of 2021. He witnessed it all, the book says, from his seat in the Situation Room and believed exiting the war was the best and only course. The book details that he was aware of the coverage around him and was, quote, uh, infuriated by it. Now, the White House today pushing back on some of these excerpts that have been released as cherry picking. Uh, they say that allies see Biden as the West's father figure, adding that he has a calming presence. Nicole. All right. Kelly Meyer live from the White House there. Thank you. All right. Joining me now is Niall Standage, White House columnist with our partners at The Hill. Niall, thank you for giving us some of your time today. Uh, this certainly is not the first political tell-all we've seen, uh, but how much could this potentially shake up the political world? It's not so much that there's any single revelation that we have seen that will shake up the political world, but a lot of these details play into the prevailing narrative about the Biden administration, whether that is, for example, the president being tired or whether it's this issue about him making gaffes that staff then later have to clean up. So those details are clearly not positive ones for the president as he is sort of beginning his re-election campaign because they stoke these existing negative perceptions. All right, let's talk about that. I mean, what do you think will be most damning here? Because as you said, I mean, President Biden is 80 years old. We all know that. So we know that, you know, when you're 80, there are certain things that are going to happen. You're probably going to be more tired. But is it going to be more focused on the pullout from Afghanistan, the withdrawal there, and what some saw as bungled, chaotic, et cetera, et cetera? I think refocusing on Afghanistan is, again, bad news for the president, because that Afghanistan withdrawal was really a pivotal moment. Nicole, if you look back at the president's approval ratings, they slid quite precipitously at the time of that chaotic withdrawal, and they have never fully recovered from that. So simply putting that back in focus, making it, again, this, the topic of segments like these and of newspaper coverage related to this book is, again, problematic for the White House. Now, we have to see the full sweep of this book. It's quite possible that there will be more uh, favorable accounts that haven't yet been picked up in it. Uh, and it's certainly a journalist who's not particularly unfriendly uh, with the right. White House. So there could be more positive aspects. Uh, so what about the time? And again, there could be certainly more positive aspects. Right now, we're kind of focusing on some things that may not be as positive. What do we know about the timing of this release? Because you know, there'll certainly be plenty of people who say this is about distracting from all of the negative attention right now on the former president and all of his current legal problems. I, I don't really buy that, to be perfectly honest. I mean, publishing calendars are set quite a long time in advance. The former president's legal problems are very, very considerable. But I don't see how you could time a book to particularly take advantage of that. The former president, as we all know, is indicted four times on 91 criminal charges. That will take whatever course it takes. I don't think it will be overshadowed by this book, though, of course, many of these details are interesting ones for all us political aficionados. <laughs> Last question for you, uh, Niall. Obviously, we know right now 
Republican presidential hopefuls battling it out. You know, most of them seem scared to attack the front runner, who happens to be the former president. Uh, is this new book likely to be a focus potentially of these GOP hopefuls if they're not going to focus on former President Trump? It gives them ammunition, I suppose. It gives them another arrow in their quiver. And this kind of circles back to where we began the discussion, Nicole. Anything that fuels these perceptions of President Biden will be eagerly seized upon by these Republican candidates. And in a way, it is a safer bet for them to attack President Biden, because that unites, obviously, the Republican electorate. It's a much more difficult calculus for the candidates not named Donald Trump to figure out what approach to take with him. So I would imagine that uh, some of those candidates will be reading the excerpts of this book quite avidly, wondering how they can weaponize them for future debates or future speeches. I would imagine you are correct. All right, Niall Standage, thank you so much. Have a great weekend. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.